But as you guys know, we've um, we've been doing this now for six months, and one of the uh, biggest challenges that we did have was uh, cloud printing. So we're going to get into that. But before we get started, I just wanted to just do a couple housekeeping um, things here as we go on. Uh, if you have any any questions, just go ahead and ask the question in the uh, status bar on the GoToWebinar control panel. There's a place to do that. And I see that we've already got one question come in. So um, feel free to uh, ask, ask away. And there is a point during the presentation where we will uh, we'll sit down and go through those questions. So uh, please ask questions. So anyway, back to Pick Cloud and, and what we're doing. Uh, as you all know, um, when we started started the company, um, one of our goals was to uh, be a worry-free environment. And what that meant was getting, getting the database into a cloud environment without any worries as you come from off-premise to uh, into a, a hosted environment. So in one of the, the challenges I said that we had was, uh, was going to be uh, printing. So uh, we we looked hard and long. Uh, we we also looked at some hardware offerings, which seemed to be a little little bit too heavy to bring that in and, and do point to point VPNs and and things like that. Um, as you all know, that um, printing traditionally from a multi value or a PIC application, the server will push the print job from the server to the printer. As we all know, when we go into a hosted data center, uh, the the server could be hundreds or even thousands of miles away. So it made it very cumbersome to do that. So we've uh, selected a product. The product is called uh, Cirrus Print. And in a few moments, I'm going to have Alan come on, and he's going to walk us through Cirrus Print uh, and how it works and uh, how to set it up and some of the benefits of that. So we'll get going here. Here's just a, a I'll just kind of, I want to touch briefly on just what we're doing uh, at, at, at Pick Cloud. We continue to what I like to call uh, in our mission statement when we started the company was to continue um, preserving and rejuvenating multi value applications. One of, you know, one of the things that I come across a lot out there is, you know, people are always looking to um, rejuvenate their, their application. And one of the things that we can do, obviously, is put them in a cloud. So uh, we like to we like to encourage that. So what is cloud computing? There's a lot of different uh, definitions of that, um, and you know the the easy answer is well, my my cloud computing means my application is in someone else's data center. That's the uh, that's what you know the normal end user would tell somebody. But the real model of cloud computing is we kind of break it down into uh, there's five characteristics of, of cloud computing, which is, you know, on demand, self-service, uh, resource pooling. So uh, what I mean by uh, on demand is uh, we can provision and monitor. We're always monitoring 24 by seven. We have total management control of the, of the, the environment, the resource pooling, what that means is, and what I imply there is the sharing uh, um, between consumers and services, the elasticity, elasticity, <laughs> uh, the ability to scale up and down uh, as we move forward, um, and then uh, there's the the three service models. Of course, we've been talking about software as a service for a long time. Uh, we also uh, talk about um, infrastructure as a service and so on. And the, the type of clouds that we have out there, when we work with our data centers, there's many different types. There's private clouds, there's public clouds, there's hybrid clouds, there's all different types. A lot of our customers like to move into a little bit of both, some public uh, and some private. Maybe we do a little bit of both. So, but the real definition um, of cloud computing is, uh, as, as we see here on the slide deck. So one thing I wanted to, to ask was the current uh, printing requirements that, that you guys have out there right now. That's the first thing that we ask when someone comes 
to us and they want to go into the cloud, the, the, one of the first questions that we ask them is how are they currently uh, printing their, their, uh, their PIC application? So what I'd like to do is just ask a quick question. And if you could just take a moment here and uh, I don't know if you all see that, the, the question. A lot of us have written some applications to do some PDF. Maybe we're still using, I come across, people are still using traditional parallel printing, of course, serial printer, and then uh, network share. It seems to be uh, one of the more popular ones out there um, as we do have our printers in the network inside our infrastructure. So we got a couple more votes coming in. I'm going to keep it open for about five more seconds. But these are some of the things that obviously we need to know before we get going in the cloud. And this is a perfect segue into Cirrus Print and how we've accomplished that. So i got five more seconds here. About 90% of you guys have voted. Hopefully you can see it. All right, I'm going to close the poll now, so we'll take a look at it. And this is, um, so let's share the results. This is exactly what I thought. 100% of you that are on the call right now have a network share. Pretty standard uh, response that we get, uh, very common. Of course, we still, 25% uh, of you have parallel printers. I still come across that. And then um, a lot of you have implemented some sort of PDF engine inside your, your PIC application, which is a good thing. We all know once we have it in a PDF, we can move that document around uh, fairly easily. So as I said, the, the, the printing aspect of us to get, to get going in here was the biggest challenge. Uh, in in getting the, the the server to push the print job out to the to the printer through all the firewalls, the firewalls that are inside the the hosted data center, and then of course the firewalls that are located at your offices there. So what I'd like to do right now is I'd like to turn it over to Alan, and Alan's going to walk us through uh, what exactly is Cirrus Print and uh, and give us a little demonstration. So I'm going to make Alan the presenter. Alan, you're there, and I hope you're ready to go. I am here. I still had the poll up. I'm sorry. OK. You got <laughs> There you go. OK. Sorry okay, about that. OK, good. So I will, uh, I will take over the presentation from where we left off. Um, OK, what is Cirrus Print? It is a client server product that's designed to make it easier to print from a, a hosted environment where your server or ERP application is, is out uh, away from where your physical locations are, where your printers actually are. Um, it's designed to minimize the data traffic. We have some very interesting compression techniques, and it's also designed to be easy to configure. It's a very server-centric configuration, so you're not out there messing with firewalls and, and printer ports and so on out at the remote locations. The, the problems that people run into when they move to the cloud uh, related to printing and document transfer um, First off, documents, especially those that are, are kind of graphically intense, can be pretty big, um, often hundreds of K or even megabytes per page. When you print documents like that over a low bandwidth or a high latency type of network connection, like we often see with cloud computing, um, that printing is time consuming and it competes with other applications. Um, your terminal services applications and so forth are all sharing that bandwidth. So anything that you can do to reduce it uh, helps improve performance overall. Um, printing to a network printer directly is not secure. Printers themselves do not support any sort of SSL or encryption on their on their network ports. So you have to to uh, invent your security a different way through VPNs or a secure tunnel. 
Um, also, if you're printing out through a firewall, uh, typically a remote location will have some sort of NAT translation going on at the router. And so you need to do a lot of configuration if you've got printers that need ports forwarded inbound. And then the other thing that happens, of course, is network connections just simply go down occasionally. And the clients at the, at the remote locations can shut down. So you need to be able to address the fact that a connection may drop and you want to you have the connection come back automatically. Now there are a number of uh, methods that people use when they move to the cloud for printing. Um, probably the most common one for software as a service applications is to rely on PDF printing, uh, which isn't really printing of course, it's just creating a PDF file and displaying it on the remote uh, on the remote desktop. Um, if you have application printing that requires things to run in batches or or during off hours, of course PDF printing does not work because it's it's got to be operating uh, with a with an attendant there. You also don't have any printer control features. So if you've developed things that rely on on tray control or duplexing and so forth. Um, PDF doesn't offer that type of, of uh, functionality. Um, another common way is terminal server printing. Um, no compression when you do that. And again, the, there has to be a user active and connected for that to work. And then the last thing is to develop uh, direct to network printer configurations for, for your network printing. Again, no compression, no security, and you've got NAT that uh, routing issues. Now the architecture of Cirrus Print is, as I said, client server. Um, there's a server software piece that resides out where the ERP application is, is printing, so where the print jobs are produced. And then there are clients at remote locations. Those clients are connected in via a, a static type of connection and they simply receive the print jobs that the server gets. The server maps and routes those jobs out to the clients and the clients deliver those to the end devices. Now part of the of the architecture of Cirrus Print is a patent pending compression technique that dramatically reduces the amount of data that has to transfer in a lot of cases. That is document type specific, but if we talk documents, those are of specific document types. You've got PCL documents, PostScript documents, PDF documents, and so forth. And our engine knows how to pick those apart and figure out redundancies and eliminate those redundancies. And so you wind up with a much lower bandwidth requirement to transfer the data out to the remote device. So our benefits, um, particularly in, in graphically intense print jobs out of uh, in PostScript or PCL print streams, we see reduction in bandwidth usage as high as 98%. Um, even PDF documents, which do support ZLib compression, basically a very good standard compression technique, um, we can reduce those as well because of the anti-redundancy techniques that we use and we see those reduce in size by as much as 80 percent. Um, very important if you're doing print jobs that rely on tray control or duplexing and so forth, when a print job goes through Cirrus Print, it gets to the destination as a, an exact copy of what was produced back on the server. So you get to retain those print control features that you might be relying on. Um, all the Cirrus print transmissions are uh, secured through SSL. And because we have clients connecting into the server rather than the server trying to push jobs out to individual printers, we only have to worry about a single port on the server firewall rather than having to configure a bunch of ports out at the remote locations. Um, also very important, the the clients, if they happen to have a loss in network connectivity or they, they get shut down and get started up in the morning or something, 
uh, the server can still receive those print jobs and it'll deliver them as soon as the clients come back online and connect in. And then we also built in features for file transfers as well as, as uh, print streams. So any of the documents you see here, PDF, Microsoft or OpenOffice, eBooks, various zip-based formats like, like XPS and so forth, um, we have the technology in Cirrus Print to, to do that high level of compression and transfer those between the server side and remote clients. So you can actually use Cirrus Print as a file delivery mechanism. So the, the Cirrus Print server, it's platform independent, runs on Windows and Unix. You always install that either on the machine where your cloud ERP solution resides or on a machine in the same data center. The main thing is, is that when you're printing, uh, you want that portion, which is you know, unencrypted and uncompressed, you want that to be fast and free. So you install the server out there where the ERP application is. Again, all the configuration is server-centric. You do it all at the server, not at the remote clients. And then once it's running, um, jobs come into the Cirrus Print server via either ports or paths, ports being a TCP IP port. So the Cirrus Print server basically looks like one or more network printers to the, to the printing application. The client server is, is unlicensed. It just goes out. You install it wherever you need it. Um, it goes on Windows or Unix as well. Um, if there are three pieces of information you need to configure uh, at the client. It, you have to tell it where the server is and how to log into that server. Now, the client software can run as a service on a server at a remote location, or it can run on user desktops as an application. Let me uh, jump into a demo here. A um, little bit of information on my desktop. Uh, I'm actually working from home right now, and I have an RDP session right here that's connected into a server uh, at the uh, at Pick Cloud, where we have a, a demo copy of Cirrus Print installed. And out here, I've got a, a, a couple of local things. This is a printer on my local machine here. And this is a folder on my local machine. So what I'm going to do first is go to a, uh, a folder that's being monitored by the Cirrus Print server. And I'm going to pull up a couple of documents here and, and drop them into Just copy and paste. I'm going to drop it into a folder that's been configured to to display documents on my desktop. So here's a, a quick little PDF that just uh, came across the net into my desktop. Let me take something a little bit bigger here. This is our presentation. It's actually about two megabytes. I'm going to paste that into my my uh, folder here, and so that sent a much bigger document out to my desktop, and we're displaying that PowerPoint presentation. Now that's one of those office format documents that we do know how to pick apart and do our, our very high level of compression on. Now let's go into our server manager here. I want to just show you right quick. I'm going to look at the job history here so you can see what got sent just now, those two transactions. Here was my little PDF file, about 27K uh, as, the, as the actual file size. We only had to send 8,500 bytes to get that file over here. Uh, this is even more dramatic. This is that two megabyte 
PowerPoint presentation. Notice I only sent 16 or a little under 17K to get it to my desktop. So that's an example of, of the sorts of compression levels that we can, we can achieve. Now let's go and do a, a quick printer demonstration. What I've got here is a, a print queue. Um, it's not actually hooked up to a printer. This is just for demonstration purposes. You can see that this is uh, my spool queue. Uh, if I had the printer hooked up, of course, it would go right through and, and print. Um, over here on the remote desktop connection, I'm going to go into a printer that's been configured. I'm going to do a test print. And we're going to see that land right there that test print landed on my local printer. Uh, it took about all of about a second here. And if we go back into here, we will see that was a uh, 276,000 byte file. We sent about 10% of that to get it there. And you can see it took about a second to land on my in my print queue locally. Okay, then we can also use this to um, to deliver documents. I've got a uh, an auto send folder out here on my desktop, and what I'm going to do is go to. I got to find my find my things here. Close the viewer. There's all my sample documents. There's my auto send folder. So this one isn't going to display the documents. It's simply going to transfer the documents. Let me just grab several files and copy them all. And I'm going to paste them all here. Move this over so we can see the things land on my local desktop. So pick those all up and there they all are on my local machine. So let's go into configuration a little bit. Um, first off, on my client, I've got my client configured to connect into the server. There's the login for the server. Again, that's all the, con the uh, configuration I need to do at the client side. The clients can be installed as a service, or they can be run as an automatic application, or they can be fired up on demand. It's, it's entirely up to the user and how they want to configure their, their client operation. The main thing though is the client, that's it. Everything else gets configured at the server. So let's take a look at the server configuration. Now this is the, the browser interface to the Cirrus print server. We've been checking out the, uh, the job history here as we sent things across, but in, uh, let's now go ahead and look at the configuration steps. Um, first thing that we set up is a remote location. So this is the corollary to this client over here. There's just an ID and a name and password, so then any client can log in and connect using that uh, ID and password. Then I configure remote devices at those remote locations. Now I've got three separate devices configured for, for my uh, demo location here. I've got our, the auto send folder that we just saw uh, get dropped in here. We've got the viewer that popped things up on my desktop. And we've got the printer. So that's my device configuration. And then the rest is mapping paths and ports. Um, we've got a local printer port. Port number 9200 on the server is mapped to this device, my location and the printer. And let's go in to take a quick look at how the, the actual printer uh, is connected to that. If I just look at the port here on this printer, you can see it's set to go to this oops, this port right here, which is port 9200. So whenever I print, it's going to go to port 9200 on 
the Cirrus print server and be forwarded out there. That's how that how that worked. And then the other thing is configuring paths. These are are, are paths that are monitored whenever files drop in those folders then it routes the the uh, files out to the particular devices so there's our viewer just said uh, whenever th something landed in this folder on the server send it out to my viewer device and likewise there was an auto send device as well right here so um, very straightforward configuration all server centric so there's very little to do out at the remote sites you just spend your effort configuring things on the server alone and just get the uh, get the clients to connect and that's all there is to it so um, Mark we are up to to questions Okay, yeah, we do have a lot of questions um, coming in. Um, one of them was, uh, let's see here, let me get back. Let's get to the questions. Okay, perfect. Uh, someone wanted to know where that server was located um, physically. Uh, good question. That The server Alan, that Alan connected to uh, is actually physically located in North Carolina and Alan is located in California. So uh, there was some distance there. There was a good 2,500 miles probably between the actual server and uh, Alan's desktop. I, you may have answered, a lot of questions were coming in, uh, Alan, while you were doing that. They may have been answered th through your demonstration, but I'm gonna go ahead and we'll just repeat them. We have about six or seven questions here. So uh, one of them was, uh, how is Cirrus Print? Uh, priced and I let me go ahead I'll answer that one um, there's two different ways you can you can buy the Cirrus print product one is uh, which works well with our pricing which is software as a service model uh, you can have um, uh, for five devices it's thirty dollars a month and it's sold in increments of five so you pay the thirty dollars a month and you and you can have up to five uh, output devices that's how I understand it. Now, if you wanted to do the old traditional model of, of pricing or of purchasing the product, you could buy a perpetual license, which retails for $1,080 plus the uh, annual maintenance on that, which is roughly about 20%. So uh, that's the, how we, how we uh, sell the product. Um, okay, I got some more questions uh, that have popped in here. I think this one was answered, but is there a is the client a dedicated PC? So you you actually showed Alan the product running from your PC. So I guess uh, hopefully we answered that question. We do have the the uh, the client that's printing will have the um, the Cirrus print client software running on there, and I'll segue into the other question that came. Um, around that was uh, let me see here one question sorry there's just they're just flooding in here um, which is good how many clients can I install Cirrus print on and I believe it's unlimited correct Alan uh, yeah yeah there's there's no limit to the number of clients that you can install out at your remote sites and and again they can be they can be on users desktops they can be on a Linux server they can be on a Windows server um, if they are on users desktops then you have the ability to to display documents real-time like I demonstrated um, on the other hand if you want to run it as a service uh, it can run all you know 24 7 and can can transfer files to folders or transfer print jobs to printers uh, 24 7 so so you know either way um, I would point out there there's one thing that that has come up 
uh, at other sites um, that that we had a good answer for, and that was um, this was a site where they had dozens of of users, all just simply using using uh, their own PCs, but they wanted it to behave like it was a, a 24/7 kind of a print environment. Um, so that as long as there was any user logged in, they could still print to any of the printers in their location. And that uh, the way we solve that is multiple clients can be configured with the exact same location ID. And the Cirrus print server will simply print jobs when, uh, when a job comes in that's supposed to go to a particular device at a location, uh, the server will look for any client that's connected from that location and anyone who is idle will get the job. So, so that actually worked out very well for them where as long as someone at their, at their office was logged in uh, running a machine, then the printing could occur to any of their printers. Okay. All right, good. Um... Let's see here. Can I have multiple clients at a remote site so that if yes. one person yeah. is not <laughs> just yeah. just answer that? Yeah, yeah. not coming today. The connection is still established. There you go. So, um, what do D three printer configuration setup look like? No different. I mean, once we defined the printer on the on the D three server there as a network share, we just add that to the Cirrus print, and away we go. And that's that's pretty much how we've done it with our D three clients. So pretty easy to do. We just set it up as like another network share. Uh, let's see another question here. Does it require any changes to the application software? Do you do SP assign F five and then print? What do you do about copying from one printer to another? Um, Again, uh, once we set up that printer, the new printer, um, I go ahead and let's say we set up a new printer in, in that particular location. I've defined the PIC printer, and this, this pertains to D3. I've defined it, and that assignment is now F5. So if I assign myself to form Q5 and print to that defined printer that we set up, away it goes, and it prints at that, at that printer. So... Again, it's a seamless, uh, seamless integration. Um, you did talk about what happens if my internet connection takes a takes a disconnect during in the middle of a print job. How do I deal with that? Well, the the client is is uh, set to monitor a heartbeat at the server, and if it senses that the connection's been dropped then it starts retry attempts to reconnect until it until it can uh, and likewise on the server side if it can't deliver a job to a client immediately it, it stores it for when that client or I should say more specifically when that when a client with that location uh, ID connects in okay uh, a question came in around um, killing a print job how do we kill a print job um, if the user doesn't want want when they turn their printer off. Well, so. Cirrus Print will have delivered that to the spooler uh, on the local machine. So that's where you would kill the job. Okay. Someone just asked me a question about evaluations. Can we can we have an evaluation of this product? Absolutely. Um, I found that when we do put in evaluations, we have a program where we can do a 30-day evaluation, uh, set it up. It doesn't take that long to set up, assuming that all the, the drivers are there. Once it's set up, away you go, and it's it'll be licensed for uh, 30 days. Give it a try at, at no cost to you. So if you are still interested in that, you can also you know give us a call. So um, another... You know, well, the presentation. Yeah, the presentation will be available. Just check our website. Uh, we put them out there uh, quite often, so just check back and give it about twenty-four hours, and I'm sure it'll appear uh, on the website. Um, 
a question came in about what kind of printers do we support? Are there any particular printers um, in Windows or Linux we'd have any issues with? Um, well, again, it's a it's a, a binary transfer of the data. So uh, the the trick is that the the print job created on the server needs to be compatible with the printer that it's going to land on. Um, so basically, the, the easy way for that is is to to have the drivers that are necessary for that printer installed on the server. Uh, oftentimes, you can get away with with a similar driver as opposed to the exact driver because most of the printers that are going to support PostScript will support you know pretty much any PostScript that comes through. Um, as far as compression goes, uh, the 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 high level of compression that we support uh, works on any PCL three through six. Uh, that includes, you know, PCL XL, um, and also any PostScript print job. Uh, and then also every bit of data that goes across the connection is compressed using standard compression. So even if you're using a uh, like a, a host-based printer or a GDI printer, which doesn't have a print language that we can parse out. Uh, instead, it's just simply printing pictures. Um, you won't get the same amount of compression that, that we get out of the other types of, uh, of print streams, but you'll still get a reasonable amount of compression, and you also gain the benefits of, of the configuration uh, and security issues that, that Cirrus Print solves. OK, good. Uh, another question came in, can you dump a PDF file to a directory and will it print at a remote location? Um, if you dump it to a directory, it, it won't print automatically. Um, so if you want to transfer PDF files, it, it won't be for printing specifically. It will be to deliver them to a location at a remote site. Um, very few printers actually support direct PDF printing. You can't simply copy a PDF to a printer, um, you know, unless it's got drivers built into it, parsers that uh, are rasterizers for PDF. Not too many do. Uh, there are some, um, but uh, you know, those printers would also support PCL and/or PostScript, and so that would be a better route for printing purposes. Okay. Okay, good. All right, well, good. Um, well, we're just, we got about three minutes left, and I think we've answered all the questions. I'll give it about another 30 or 45 seconds here. Um, but, Alan, I want to thank you for taking time today to um, hop on our webinar and, you know, discuss one of the, the biggest challenges that we've had as a, as a new company in printing, and we're, we're real excited about uh, the Cirrus Print product. It's worked well. We've already uh, installed it. In a, uh, in, a, in a site and it's working well. We haven't had any issues with it. We, um, we did do the 30-day the evaluation and it proved to be very well. We have custom, we, just to give you a, a quick story on this customer there, they're running a multi-value application. They have um, their server in, in the data center out here in Irvine and they have about three or four remote locations with about five or six people in the office and they needed the ability to print. Uh, in those offices and and uh, in one of the, the major office we did a site-to-site -site VPN which uh, was a, there was a lot of overhead there and it cost a lot of money and then the other remote sites we decided to go with Cirrus Print and it's worked out great uh, no problems at all and so we're real excited about it and we look forward to it so uh, again thank you Alan for hopping on board and for those attendees that are still here of course um, we all, like all of our webinars, we do give away a $25 Amazon card. Um, so we're excited about giving that. It'll, um, our marketing department will put that together, and you sh you'll some you guys will get an email. Um, please visit our website uh, often as we do make changes. If you have any more questions um, about Cirrus Print or Pick Cloud, feel free to send us an email at info at mypickcloud.com, and we will be back. Uh, probably after the 4th of July for another webinar. So stay tuned, check our, our newsletter that comes out. And again, 
uh, thank you for all of you that attended today. And we'll look forward to um, catching you on our next broadcast. And, and Alan, again, thank you. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. You're welcome. And, and thank you. Okay. Bye-bye.